I think this is a tricky time in history that we're living in, and it's important to understand where the opportunity really lies. So for me, the opportunity today is not that clear if you're going to invest broadly in small mid-caps, in fact, broadly in equities. The opportunity is if you're going to pick your battles, picking stocks in small mid-caps, because there's a lot of hidden value, and uh, especially if you're able to buy a Smith versus large. I think the opportunity there is bigger than anything I've ever seen in the last in the last 30 years. Um, so and so it's, this is a generational opportunity you're spelling out to us. It, it is, uh, and, for, and for a whole lot of reasons. So 22, 23 were years where my recommendation was to stay away from small mid for all kinds of reasons. You know, the economy had a question mark to it, and Smith is a bit of play in the economy. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, there was wage inflation and small mid-caps are more labor intensive and interest rates were going up and small mid-caps have more float in there. So many reasons for why you had to be away from Smith then. Smith underperformed. But November 3rd of last year, I changed that view. And we became overweight as Smith when no one really wanted to touch that asset class. And it is because the underperformance you've had in Smith in the UK, in the US, in the continent, in Australia, in developed markets, ex-Japan, the underperformance is an order of magnitude bigger than you've ever seen. The valuation argument is there. Fundamentals are getting better. You pointed to some uh, ideas there. And um, I mean, all around, the story has just gotten a lot more enticing. So, so before people rush out and buy a basket of small and mid-cap stocks, you're saying this comes with a warning label, you have to stock pick. What type of stocks stand out? Is there, is there anything that uh, sort of draws some similarities between the names that you like? Yeah. So. When people are thinking broadly about equities, I feel um, one has to be a bit cautious. It seems we're in a time when bad news is bad news, but then good news is potentially bad news on inflation. So careful there. But when you think at the stock level, it's about understanding where are the problems and trying to avoid them, and where are the opportunities and trying to capitalize on them. So we live in a world where margins last year contracted, and consensus expectations are that this year margins will expand and next year they will expand. And I don't see how that can happen when you have top line growth decelerating and costs going higher. So think about pricing power and therefore think about high margin businesses, point number one. Point number two, you're in a world today where consensus estimates of earnings growth are expecting a huge acceleration. Last year you had 0 to 5% growth in a small mid caps in developed markets like Japan. This year is double the years, next year is 20%. It's not going to happen. So find stocks that have achievable expectations. And then, um, you know, point number three, there is a lot of value. 40% of a small mid caps in the UK, in the US, in the continent, in Australia. 40% are down more than 40% from the end of 2021. So find value, don't overpay. Wow, there's a lot in there. Um, let me just ask the question, because you, you must question yourself sometimes, with, as you and Karen were pointing out, this generational opportunity as well. What's the case for the defence for those, or the case for the prosecution, it depends which way you're looking at it, of why people aren't animated by the Smith um, sector? So, Steve, I, I think um, you know where you draw conviction? When the people trying to tell you you're wrong make absolutely no sense. And that's the, qu the question to today. <laughs> and that's the question today. Look, I hear a lot of reasons since last November when we turned over with Smith for why large is really the is going to outperform Smith you know, for the rest of eternity. And the two that I think simplify how you know, consensus has gone yes, um, you know, completely against common sense is, think about this. People argue that AI is really going to benefit large, right? You've never seen a big change in technology or in the way things are done benefiting the large incumbents. It's all about the new companies that made it, you know, their life about the new technology. It's going to be about the IPOs in Smith that come and you know, are 100% AI focused that are really going to deliver the, the growth opportunity. If you look at consensus estimates on Microsoft on 2025, it's 15% growth. That makes sense. So just, just expand upon that point because I think our viewers, and maybe we'll try and get this on .com as well, the AI opportunity mm -hmm. is about the smaller companies, and I presume what you're going to say is, is about the productivity improvements that this can deliver to, and you've already alluded to the wage concerns mm -hmm that were holding back small and medium sized companies. It's exponential compared with the larger companies, the benefits they can accrue from AI. Yeah, and, and you mentioned a good point, which is, you know, if small mid-caps are more labor intensive and AI is gonna be able to reduce the, you know, labor intensity of many businesses and they're the clear beneficiaries. But on top of that, just think about it. 
when you're a large company and there's a new change in technology, that new way of doing things is going to impact a part of your business, which is already pretty huge. When you're an IPO fully focused on the new ways, you have 100% exposure to that. So while Microsoft is expected to do 15% earnings growth in 2025, that's not the kind of growth you're going to get from the typical SMID AI focus IPO. Those are going to grow earnings 15 times, not 15%, right? Mm -hmm. As is being the case in every other you know, significant change uh, technology leap that we've seen historically.